U.S. military unit, a team of U.S. Navy SEALs. Now, they are considered the best of the best. Retired General and former Joint Chiefs Chairman Colin Powell knows a lot about these special forces. He was also Secretary of State on 9-11 and was a major figure in the Bush administration's attempt to get bin Laden dead or alive. Powell spoke with Will Blitzer this evening. The president turned out to have made the correct judgment, and he was supported by a great military team and an intelligence team, and, of course, those very, very brave Navy SEALs who went in. Describe those Navy SEALs to us, because, you know, we hear about them, we read about them. Uh, this was a joint operation, not just Navy SEALs, but there were intelligence operatives who went and they have been planning this for a long time. They've been planning it for a long time. They've been, they've been uh, building mock-ups of what the compound looked like. This is what these folks do. This is what the CIA does. The defense intelligence agencies work on it as well. And this is what you expect our Joint Special Operations Command, consisting of Navy SEALs, Army Commandos, Army Special Operations people, our Delta Force, lots of resources you can, you can pull forward. But the SEALs are uh, at the top of the, uh, top of the list of these kinds of units. Uh, when, when, when you were the, uh, the, the Secretary of State, and you used to obviously go into the Situation Room in the West Wing of the White House when you are Chairman of Joint Chiefs, at one point in your career you were the National Security Advisor. Do they have the technology during that 40 minutes that the troops were on the ground, the helicopters were there for folks, including the President, in the Situation Room to be watching or listening and hearing commands, knowing what's going on? During my time, we weren't quite that advanced, but uh, what's happened in the last 10 years with respect to technology, I'm sure it was quite possible. I don't know exactly what the President was able to see or what they were showing him, and John Brennan didn't, uh, didn't clarify that for us. But what I'm absolutely sure of is that they had minute by minute, second by second, control and knowledge of what was going on inside that compound. And you can only imagine, General Powell, uh, during those 40 minutes that the troops were on the ground and there was this firefight, and all of a sudden they're told in the Situation Room, a helicopter is no longer operating. We got a problem. Uh, how, how, how nervous everyone must have been. Uh, you really, you really feel the tension at that point. Uh, former Secretary of State uh, Colin Powell. The helicopter that malfunctioned was destroyed by the Special Operations Forces. They often do that. They don't want to leave any uh, U.S. equipment behind. The team lived up to the Navy SEALs' credo to be a, quote, special breed of warrior ready to answer our nation's call. They are famously secretive, but tonight Tom Foreman is lifting the curtain somewhat. Tom, what do we know about the team that killed bin Laden at this point? I'll tell you the main thing you know, Anderson, they don't want us to know much, particularly about this group. It's largely believed this was a group called SEAL Team 6, which trained somewhere in Afghanistan in that mock compound and then went into the actual compound to stage the raid. These are, even among the highly trained and very excellent SEALs, a group within that that are recruited to be the special, special team that's almost mythical in that it's very, if you're not part of it or you don't work with them, it's very hard to find out anything about them. But here's what we do know about them. They tend to be older than average troops, 20s to early 30s. They want people who are more mature, who've had a lot of training, who can think on their feet and a lot of experience. They're in top physical shape, as all of the SEALs are. They're generally recruited for this special group for being highly intelligent, flexible in the changing environment, and aggressive. And interestingly enough, many of them are family men. What that means, basically, is they're a little bit older, that they would have some possibilities more of having a family, but also what people were telling me today, sources were saying, it also means that these are people who are very confident in their skills, and they believe they can get the job done, so they can have a house and a fence and a dog, and they believe they'll come home safely, even though they're doing unbelievably dangerous work, Anderson. Yeah, and, and, and you know, in a, a kinetic situation like this, I mean, there's so many moving factors, and yet they just seem remarkably efficient and focused. How did they get to that point in terms of training? That's really a, that's a great question, Anderson, because these, a lot of these guys are described as quiet, sort of cerebral. One guy said to me today, these are the kind of guys you'd see playing chess, not poker. So they're very calm, sort of easygoing guys. So how do you get up to that point? Well, the secret is very simple. You have un believable training that goes on for quite some time. What kind of training? First of all, it's intense and relentless. These guys learn to deal with very difficult circumstances around the clock at all times. They study all skill sets for their weapons and their tactics, and importantly over here, for medical reasons as well. When you're in a small team like this, if somebody gets hurt, somebody on that team has to help take care of that person. They're highly, highly secretive. 
They don't like to let anybody know what they're up to. That's part of what makes them effective because they can really jump out there and strike unsurprising. And many continue in intelligence work after military service. You heard the general talk about it a minute ago, the idea of them working well with intelligence forces. Well, they share a lot of similar values, and many of them, after they leave the SEALs, or particularly SEAL Team 6, many of them may go into intelligence work after that, Anderson. A remarkable uh, group of people. Tom, appreciate it. Uh, and again, we're trying to find out more details as each hour, hour goes by. We're live for the next hour here at Ground Zero, where the construction workers, they're working all night. This is an around-the-clock uh, effort to rebuild Ground Zero, and it continues tonight. Uh, especially on this night. Coming up at the top of the hour inside the operation to kill Bin Laden. What we know at this point, the details, the minute-by-minute -minute details as we've been learning them, pictures from inside the compound as well, and new details about how the U.S. tracked them down. Monday Night Crime.